And welcome back. The new thriller, The Purge, was up against the box office leader, Fast and Furious 6, and also those magicians turned burglars. For a final trick, we are going to rob a bank. The heist movie, Now You See Me, turned magic and bank robbery into $19.5 million, good enough for third place. Just ahead was the sixth installment in the hard-driving Fast and the Furious franchise. It's still going strong, pulling in $19.8 million. I want all these barricades down. It stays on every door and every window. But with $36.4 in earnings, this weekend's top movie was The Purge, about a well-off family trapped at home for the one night a year that all crime is legal. No, I, I wasn't working. Jason Garber is a film critic with uh, TwitchFilm.com and joins us now. So the uh, purge, uh, what'd you think? Yeah, I didn't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's so, the deal. Um, I, I've been looking for years for some crazy, like, compound German word for films that by any reason should be terrible and then aren't. I love those films, those films that you go in and think it's going to be this movie, and then it's amazing. This is the opposite of that. This is exactly the film that I thought it would be, and then it just does it. It's a very good, high concept. Let's talk about um, contemporary American society. Let's talk about the nature of violence. Let's talk about moral decision-making within the context of a thriller and look the thing was made for three million dollars it was made by the guys that did paranormal activity and were producers on the sinister um, they've taken the notion of what it is to be a modern horror film and made it just safe and just interesting enough to get a lot of people in the opening weekend I don't think it's gonna do particularly well moving forward but given the fact that this is a weekend that's really a lull before the ginormous uh, <laughs> onslaught of Man of Steel next week this right. is the kind of risk that some um, the smaller studios can take. Again, I didn't really like it, but some audiences don't mind stupid people doing stupid things. I hate it. I hate when you see family members do really, really dumb things. You're like, why are you going into the dark? Just stay together. Stop spreading out. So, yeah, there's my problem with the film. Uh, considering the weekend uh, that you d just described is coming just before a big, giant right. movie, would a studio, you know, release this at this time on purpose? For sure. So what happens, especially with these films, this is definitely counter-programming, right? So you're trying to, you're trying to sneak in uh, about with all the other films they're playing at the same time. That's why a film like Fast 6 is still doing super well. Your favorite. I love Fast 6. <laughs> Although it's not as good as Fast 5, but still, I do love it. No, it's, it's, it's the type of film that will sort of play within the niche. So if a person's already seen Fast 6 and looking for a little bit more thrill, that's the kind of thing they're going for. You do that with the, the sort of, I hate the term, but the majority of the chick flick, that when you have a really big explosions going on film, they'll counter-program with something that's a little bit more date-friendly. Um, um, for people who consider that, that and just sort of slot it in that way. So studios are very savvy about this, and sometimes uh, f one film can rise above the others. Okay, uh, the movie The, uh, the East, uh, you saw that one as well. Yeah, so there's another little film which hasn't caught on. Again, high concept film. It's about a, a, a group, a, a Brit Marling, um, is a former FBI agent that gets hired by a company to infiltrate a bunch of eco-terrorists. So you have, a, um, uh, you have Ellen Page in it, you have um, uh, uh, Scar uh, the younger Skarsgård, mm -hmm. who most people know from True uh, Blood. And, and it's a film that should work. It's got some interesting issues. It's got to do with corporate espionage, but it is so flat and so two-dimensional that you know exactly what's taking place. And for a film that has to do with high security, mm -hmm. the least you can do is put a password on your computer. I swear to God, when it's like little things like that, like, you know, if it's dark, turn on the lights. It's that kind of level of, of suspense or thriller movie. I love when smart people do things and then fail. I love when I'm actually intensely into a film and somebody's just r racking their brains trying to figure out what to do and that's what causes tension and drama for me. When you have a bunch of stupid people doing stupid things, I don't really care that they're failing at the things they're trying to do. <laughs> okay, uh, moving along to Before Midnight. Right, so here's the counter example. We had Ethan Hawke in The Purge. Here's I never liked Ethan Hawke until I saw these three films and again I did one of the marathons that you're so proud of me for. Back in 1994, <laughs> Richard Linklater did a film with Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy about a bunch of 20-somethings that met on a train, and all they do is talk, and by any rights, that film should have been terrible, and yet they are so engaging and so real that it's stunning. And an amazing move, 10 years after that, 
they get together in their 30s. And there's, uh, so in the first one, they're in Austria, and the second one, they're in Paris. Here we are 20 years later, the same actors, the same cast, living the relationships as these characters mature. It's an incredible achievement in cinema, and you really see that Ethan Hawke, first of all, is an amazing actor when he can't, wants to be, mm -hmm. and second of all, just the notion of, as I grow up, I'm almost the same age as these guys, so when I'm watching the 20-somethings on the train who's picking up the cute blonde uh, girl who, from Paris, I'm like, yeah, that was me in my 20s as I traveled through Europe, and now in the 30s, I'm like, okay, now I'm 40, he's 41 in the film, I'm like, uh, when, you, when you have relationships relationship uh, challenges, when you have anything that goes on with adulthood, I'm like, oh my god, I'm seeing myself through the lens of this film. It is an incredible work and definitely one that it's now opening wide across the country. It's definitely one worth seeking out. Jason, thanks very much. Thanks, Scott. And a reminder, you can be followed at a uh, Twitter, at, uh, on Twitter at filmfest underscore CA. Jason, have a great uh, week. See you next week, Scott.